English by the Nature Method, Chapter Thirty One, the Thirty First Chapter, Shopping in London. The next morning, when they were having their breakfast, they discussed what to do on their first day. When they had discussed the question for some time, they agreed to take a long walk through the streets of the West End to look at the shops and perhaps go shopping themselves. They walked down Charing Cross Road, a street which is well known for its many second-hand bookshops. You understand, Mr. Miller explained to them, that you can only buy books second-hand in these bookshops. The books have already been bought once and are read and and read by people and then sold by them to these second-hand bookshops. People are only able to get a very low price. When they sell second-hand books in this way to a bookshop, they stopped to look at some of the books which had been put into large boxes outside the shops, and were pleased to find some in their own language. The shops with foreign stamps, of which there are a great number, were of special interest to Wood and Stall, who had collected stamps for several years. When I started collecting stamps, said Wood, I had at first a collection of about a hundred. Since then, it has grown from year to year, and now I have a collection of about eight thousand stamps. However, I do not think it will grow very much during the next few years, because I shall not have so much time to spend on it. During my first few years as a stamp collector, I spent a great part of my time looking at my old stamps and going to the stamp shops for new ones, and therefore my collection grew very rapidly. At school, two of my schoolfellows and I were so very interested in our foreign stamps that we almost forgot our schoolwork. In the afternoon, we three schoolfellows used to go to the shops near our homes to look at the latest foreign stamps and buy as many as we could afford. But now I cannot spend so much time on my collection, although I am still a very interested collector. I see they have a. They have the latest stamps from our country in this shop, but the prices are higher than at home. When they had walked for some time, they came to Shaftesbury Avenue, a road running both ways from Charing Cross Road. Would shall we turn to the left there? To, shall we turn to the left here down this street? Mr. Miller, no, I think we will turn to the right. Both the street and our left, and the street on our right, are paths of Chatsbury Avenue. If we turn to the left, we shall soon get back to the hotel again. Therefore, we will turn to the right, which will take us to Piccadilly. Consequently, they now turn to the right, down Chatsbury Avenue. Chatsbury Avenue. In this part of the town, they noticed that they passed cinema after cinema. And Mr. Miller told his pupils that this part of the town is so full of cinemas and theatres that the Londoners often call it theatre land. When they got to Piccadilly, they noticed one shop after another, with shirts, ties, socks, etc. They spent a long time going from window to window, looking at all the different articles. Storm. What nice things they have in these shops! Have you noticed that shirt over there, Brown? How do you like it? I think I will go in and buy it, Mr. Miller. No, you had better not, Storm. Money for buying shirts is not including is not included in the fifteen pounds we are going to spend in England. These shirts and all the other articles you see in the shops in Piccadilly are very expensive. Some time later, Brown asked whether they were near. Bond Street, as he said, he took a special interest in seeing that street, Mr. Miller. Well, Bond Street was not included in our plans for today, but we can pass through it to Oxford Street. The three friends were surprised to see the shops in Bond Street. Many of them were tailors' shops. That's a tailor, Mr. Miller. This is a street especially for men's shopping. The best tailors in London have their shops in this street, but you will notice that no prices are shown on the suits of clothes, of clothes you see in the windows. And I will tell you the reason. If you buy a suit of clothes 
at Taylor's in Bond Street, you will have to pay him about 20 guineas for it. Out of the 20 guineas, 10, I think, will pay for the suit itself. The other 10 will you pay for the name of Bond Street. You see that there are good reasons why you should not buy your clothes here. However, you must not think that most, that most Londoners buy the clothes at a Bond Street tailor's. Only, be, only people with lots of money go shopping here. But now I will take you to Selfridges, one of the biggest shops in the world. They have lots of different articles there, so that people can buy everything from a pin to an elephant. As the saying goes, and there you will be able to get something for your money. Our four travellers spent an hour or two in Selfridges, buying sticks, handkerchiefs and cigarettes. When they came out again, Wood said to Storm, How do you like my new stick? With this in my right hand, I feel that I could walk to the end of the world. He saw Mr. Miller smile, and then heard him laugh, saying, I'm sure you could. However, I think we have bought enough for today. Now let us go home through Oxford Street. A cup of tea would do us good.